building a camper you can load up with gear and drive into the forest is pretty awesome. But version 1.0 wasn't perfect. The motor was a little bit weak and the steering could have been better. So today, I'm going to install some major upgrades like bigger motors, bigger battery, better controls, and more. And I'll show you every step of the way. And once it's upgraded, we're going to load it up with our gear and take it out for another night on the forest. And our first step to upgrade it is, we actually have to disassemble it quite a bit. I've removed the screws that are holding on the yellow tarp and I place it off to the side. I then go around and unscrew the clamps that are holding on the greenhouse so I can lift it off in one piece. I walk over to the back where I unscrew the old bike rack that was holding in the battery. I head over to the front where I unbolt the steering wheel so I can pop it off because for the upgraded version we're not even going to need a steering wheel. I lift up the front end and put it on some jack stands so that I can take a power tool and remove the old tires. And just like the steering wheel we're not even going to need these front wheels as I'm going to replace them with something else later. I then went ahead and removed all of the floorboards to give myself access to all the electronics for all the upgrades we're going to be doing. So with all the components and wires exposed, it's time to go around and decide what needs to come off. And the first component to go is the DC to DC converter. I also go ahead and remove the old battery cutoff switch as we're not going to need that as well. And I even go around and cutting off the wires to the main controls because we're not even going to need the main control box either. The only electrical components that I'm keeping happens to be the lights. Everything else is getting a major upgrade. Time to flip this thing over so we can get access to the bottom. I head over to the old steering mechanism where I unbolt the knuckle and unscrew the steering mechanism and just completely remove it all. I head over to the back tracks where I unbolt them both and set them to the side because I am going to be reinstalling them later. And of course we're going to be upgrading our motor. Even though this got us where we were going last time, it just wasn't strong enough. But its replacement will be. I check out the axle and you can see there's a bunch of vines and grass caught up in it. Which isn't the best, but we don't have to worry about that with our new upgrade. And it's about time I showed you the new motor for this build. It's a massive electric differential, it's 48 volts and it's 1000 watts, so it's twice as strong as our last motor. And it comes with some axles that you could just slot into the differential and you don't have to ever worry about chains or gears getting caught up in weeds again. I may have went a little bit overboard and got 4 of these motors, so we have a total of 4000 watts, 8 times stronger than our last build, one for each axle, and I'm so excited about it. With our new massive motors, we're going to have to unscrew and move around the frame a little bit so we can get some proper places for these motors to mount. After I position the boards where I want them, I put in some massive screws to hold them in place. I take all of the motors and I lay them where I want them to sit with the axles alongside them. I take the bolts that came with the motor and I begin to install one of the axles by slipping it into place and I take a ratchet and tighten it down to make sure it never comes out. I go around and connect all of the axles to the other motors making sure they're nice and secure. Next I want to take these motors and connect them together to form one super axle and the way I'm going to do that is with some pipe flanges and some pipe. And if I take the flange and lay it over the differential we can see it fits pretty nicely but sadly the holes don't line up but lucky for me the gaskets that came with the differentials I can use as a stencil so I can go around with the marker mark some spaces that I can later drill on out. With our metal pieces drilled out, it was time to screw it all together, but I want it to be stronger than just threaded rod. I go ahead and grab my welder and begin to weld all the pieces together. I weld both sides and I also weld both pieces, front and back. With our freshly welded midsections, it's time to finally install it, but before I do, I wanted to make a little gasket out of tape just to keep any dirt or grime from falling inside the differential. I poke some holes, I thread the bolts through it, and I go ahead and tighten it down to one side. I repeated the same process of making a little gasket and bolting it together, and now we have ourselves one of the super axles, 2000 watts of power, and it's looking great. I hop over to the other side where I attach the other two motors together to form our other super axle. I place some wooden spacers underneath the axle and this is going to act as a mount. I then line them up where I need them to be and I screw them into the base. I place the axle back on top so I can go around with the marker to mark out where I need to drill some holes. I grab a drill bit and begin to drill the holes through both of the boards. Time for some bolts. I'm going to use these really large bolts to attach the axle to the frame so I thread them through and I tighten everything together. And now we have one strongly attached super axle. I head over to the other side and repeat the same process that I just did. With both of our axles attached nice and secure, it's time to put on the treads. 
I slip the tread on the axle, I tighten the nut, I put in the cotter pin so that it'll never come out, and I do the same thing on the other side. Since I'm not going to be reusing the tires on the front, I got myself another set of these tracks, mostly because they're just really awesome and it's going to feel like I'm driving around a mini tank. With the treads now attached to the axles, it's time to flip this thing over, and it is so heavy. I ended up using a jack stand to help me reposition on it so I could gently lift it up and gently set it down. And we can start to see how this thing's going to look. With the motors on there, we're still going to need a way to control them. That's where these come in. I got myself four of these motor controllers. They're made for 48 volt motors and 1000 watts, which is perfect for my motors. And I'm thinking of installing the controllers on the side of the wall because I have to have room for these bus bars in the center here, which are going to help distribute power to all the controllers. So I screw them down into place. And now it's time to work on the main wire that's going to power everything. And this is the thickest wire I've ever used. It's just crazy thick. It's two gauge wire. I crimp on some end connections and I put on some heat your tubing for color coding. I take the two gauge wire back to the bus bar and I screw it down in the center, tightening it nice and tight. So I get this thinner 10 gauge wire and start making pairs of it, connecting it to the empty spots on the bus bars, tightening it all down and putting on the plastic covers. I grab one of the motor controllers, I position it where I want it, and I put in some screws in the side to hold it securely in place. I go around and do the same for all the other brushless motor controllers, securing them all to the wall. And now for the fun part, wiring up one of these controllers. It's a little bit daunting, but you just gotta start with something. So I strip crimp the power connections, I plug in the hall sensor. Next up, the three phase wire connectors where I crimp and heat shrink it all together. But there's still more to go, because I still want to connect the throttle, the brakes, and the forward and reverse switch. After a little while longer of attaching some more wires and heat shrink tubing, we finally had our first brushless controller hooked up. Only three more to go. So I went around to all the other controllers and hooked them all up. And with a good portion of the wiring finally done, it was time to do some cable management. I got some of the split tubing that I went around and covered the wires with so I could cleanly and securely attach it to the frame. After a little bit longer of some cable management, it was time to finally test out our circuit. And this is where I found out something, uh, very bad. You see, when I tested out the motor, it would spin, but I was able to stop the axle with a measly finger. Something was definitely wrong, as this is supposed to be twice as strong as the last motor, but I'm able to stop it with my hand. So, I had to do the only thing I knew how to do, and that is, unbolt the motor, drop it down so we can take a peek on what's going on in the inside. I cracked the thing open like an egg, and it spilled oil everywhere. I unbolted the central gear, revealing a whole bunch of grease that I cleaned off, but after I cleaned it away, I could finally understand what was going on. In this central gear, there's a small gear and a big gear, and they spin freely, and I don't want that. I'm going to have to place these gears back inside, grab my welder, and just weld the central gears together so that they finally spin as one. Sure, it may not be the cleanest solution, but hey, it ought to work. So with the freshly welded franking gear that spins as one, I take the cap and I screw it back together. I then take the two halves, I close them on up, and I bolt it together. I unscrew the little oil nut and I fill it up with some more gear oil. And now for the moment of truth. I hit the throttle and this thing is a beast. I cannot stop it with my hand and we're finally back on track. And through the power of editing, and about 5 hours later, I managed to drop all the other motors, weld all the central gears, and put them back together. With the motors on there and working, we're going to need a way to control everything. I have two of these small little throttle pedals that you'd probably find on a go-kart. I have two of these rocker switches that are going to be for the forward and reverse. And I have this yellow button here which I'm going to hook up to the brakes. With the switches in hand, it's time to build a box to hold them all. The first one I install is going to be the switch for the brakes, and this is just an arcade switch. I then install a housing which is later going to hold the switch for the lights on the vehicle. I take the forward and reverse switches, I lay them down, and I screw them into place. I start to build up the rest of the enclosure of the controller. I then take the throttle pedals and lay them out where they're going to be, and I screw them down to the frame itself. I take some cable glands and screw them into the holes I drilled in the back, and these are going to make the wires look a lot nicer. And there we have it, the basic shape of our controller. And since this is going to be tank steering, these switches are going to control the forward and reverse for each side. This is the throttle for the right side, this is the throttle for the left side, we also have the yellow button for the brakes, and I'm eventually going to install the button for the lights right here. This thing looks great, it feels great, and it's better than a steering wheel. 
I take some Ziploc bags and I cover up the remaining wires on the brushless controllers. I zip tie and close as well, and this is just to make sure there's no weird shorting if they ever get wet. With the wiring done on the back half of the vehicle, I can finally take some of the floorboards and set them back out on top. I lay them out up to the front, but I do leave a space because I still have to install the controller and one more component. I take some screws and I screw in all the boards to the frame. I take the last component which I need to install, which is another DC to DC converter, except this time it's going to take 48 volts and change it to 12 volts, and this is just so I can still use my light system. I attach the input and output wires on the power, I screw it down, I add some cable management, and I attach it to the last free post on the bus bar, tighten it down, and close it on up. And now we have our light system power. I can finally take the last two floorboards and lay them down, but I still have to drill a couple holes. And the purpose of these holes is so I can wire the controller through the floor. I grab some more of the cable glands and screw them onto the holes. Now I can take the wires for the controller and feed them through to the other side. I pull them nice and even and I tighten them up to make some really nice wire management. And for the last floorboard, I still have to drill a couple more holes, and the point of these is just going to be so I can feed the very heavy duty 2 gauge wire to later connect it up through a battery. I go around with some screws and I screw the final boards into place. And now it's time to wire up our controller. I take off the back and I pull the wires through. I solder and connect all the wires with some heat shrink tubing. I pull the forward and reverse wires through the front. I go ahead and attach it to the toggle switches, making sure it's nice and tight. And then I attach it back to the controller. I feed the wires for the lights through the open hole. I plug it into the switch and I snap it into place. I carefully take the back of the controller without catching any wires, place it on top and screw it down. Then I take the bottom and I screw it down into place as well. I take some zip ties and go around the length of the cords just to make sure none of the wires pop out of the split tubing. And would you look at that, we ditched our steering wheel and made ourselves a nice little high tech controller. It's got throttles for each side, it's got forward and reverse for each side, it's got a brake button, and it's got a button for the lights. Absolutely beautiful. With our controller hooked up, our system is still missing one major component, a massive battery. And thanks to the folks at EnjoyBot, they actually reached out and asked me if I'd be interested in a lithium iron phosphate battery. And I told them about my project and they agreed to send me this. And this is a beautiful 48 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from EnjoyBot. It's actually a really nice build quality. It's got a physical power switch on the top, which you can turn on and off, which is really nice and safe, especially when you're using such a big battery. And it's actually the smartest battery I've ever had. It has Bluetooth connectivity, so you can view its status, how much charge it has, how much power it's putting out. I honestly think it's super useful because I always want to know how much charge I have left. I'm going to link in my description to their batteries and some of their products, so definitely go check them out and send them some love. And thanks again, EnjoyBot, for sending me the battery. Now that we have our battery, it's time to build an enclosure for it. I begin to assemble it with just a bunch of pieces of wood I cut out earlier. I take a small sander and give it a rough sanding, and this is just to take off any sharp edges so I don't hit my elbow on it or anything like that. I grab some small handles that I attach to the sides, and this just makes it easier to open and close. And I designed the enclosure to have these locking teeth just to keep it from sliding around when I'm moving. I also cut out a triangle on the back that's going to allow wires to run into the battery. And since the EnjoyBot battery has a physical power switch, I decided to make use of it by drilling a hole in the top of the lid so I'm able to turn it on and off without having to lift the lid. With our battery box complete, I placed it on the vehicle, I slid it where it's going to go, I lifted the lid, I took some screws and I screwed it directly to the floorboards. Nice and secure. And now to install our beast of a battery. I pick it up, I slide it in its new home. And since it came shipped with this really nice foam, I decided to cut up some pieces and place it around the enclosure just to give it some extra cushion when we're driving this thing around. Time to wire up the battery, but first I want to adjust the length of our cable, so I take an angle grinder to cut it, which is just so wild, I've never cut a wire with an angle grinder. I go ahead and crimp on some new end terminals, put on some heat shrink tubing for color coding, and I also attach these little silicone protectors that came with the battery. I head over to the terminals, I put in the screws, and I screw them both down. I close up the box, and we can still see we have access to the button on the top. And we can also see how the wires come out the front. With our camper upgraded with more power, more treads, more battery, better controls, it's time to put the greenhouse back on top. I screw it back into place with the clamps. I grab the yellow tarp again, I throw it over the top, I line it up with the base, and I screw it back into place. 
With the tarp nice and secure, I go ahead and convert it back into driving mode to reveal the cockpit and the back lounge area, and I still think the thing looks so cool. After about a day, I was still thinking about this battery and how it can improve the build, and I landed on this. I got myself a small little inverter. It's 48 volts and 375 watts. You just wire it up to your battery, and it puts out 120 volt AC. So I go ahead and take the inverter, I place it on the side of the battery holder, I screw it in with some short screws to secure it in place, I attach the positive and negative to the back of the inverter, I run the wires up to the battery and screw it down to the terminals. I add some split tubing for a little bit of cable management and I close up the lid. So now I have my inverter on the side right here, so when I'm out there I can go ahead and plug something into it like a light or really anything, and now we're going to have power out in the wild. Pretty sweet. I also wanted to install these, they're little hooks that I'm going to use as cable tie downs, so I go around the edge of the structure and I put in some screws to hold them in place, and I'm going to use these to tie down my gear when we're driving this thing around, just so my stuff isn't sloshing around everywhere. And there's only one more final touch to add, and that is a custom tiny little license plate that's like the cherry on top of this beautiful version 2.0 of the camper. And with the build complete, there's only one thing left to do, and that is to load it up with all the gear we're going to need to spend the night out in the forest, tighten it all down, and take this thing out for a ride. Let's go. Well, we made it again. We're in the middle of the forest. We drove out here in our new upgraded camper version 2.0. I really like the controls on it. It's a lot better than the steering wheel. And you can also see how there's like uh, dirt in here because these treads or tires, they would just fling dirt everywhere just because they're so powerful and this thing's so heavy. It just leaves like a trail of destruction behind us, which is kind of interesting. But yeah, this thing got out here like a charm, way better than the last time. It didn't get caught up in any of the weeds. It pretty much acted like they weren't there. We have our new battery, our massive 48 volt, 100 amp hour Joybot battery. This thing's a beast. And it seems that we used only 4% of our total battery capacity. And to think, I was a little Little worried that this battery would be eaten up pretty quickly. I could drive this thing so much further and not even have to worry. To the side of the battery, I have my small little inverter here so I can go ahead and power some electronics with just normal 120 volt AC. And if we turn around to the back of the camper, we can see up all my gear again. I decided to reuse these hanging baskets just because I think they're really handy in this setup, especially with the greenhouse, how it's made out of these poles. You can just hang them on here and literally just load it up with so much gear. Flashlights, little cooking pot, bug spray, which I'm using a lot of because it's so buggy right now. Camera gear. I decided to bring the big flashlight again for fun, TP, bunch of water, and just a bunch of other food and other equipment. And of course, I have my pillow, my sleeping bag, and my little mat underneath. This poor thing got pretty dirty from all these treads just spewing dirt everywhere. If we go check out the back, we can see that it leaves like a trail and literally just like tears up the ground wherever it goes, which is pretty crazy. And wherever it gets caught, when you try to turn it and it slips, it literally just digs a hole in the ground. It didn't even get stopped at all by any of these weeds or sticks or anything like that. Way more power than the last version and I'm super impressed with it. And it took us out here, no problem at all. We got the sun starting to poke out a bit, which is really nice. It's starting to become a beautiful day. And on the back side, you can see we got the nice little greenhouse netting or kind of clear plastic that zip closed with all my gear there. You just drive this thing out here and you're ready to go. Let's go ahead and start to set up camp. I decided to bring my big old flashlight again just because it's pretty cool. There we go. And this is my camera gear. And right there, that is camp set up. Well, here we are in our camper once again in the middle of the forest. This is camper build number 2.0, upgraded power, 
battery, steering. This thing is an absolute beast now. It just plows through everything I want to drive through. And you can see I'm using the battery as like a little table for my storage here. I also brought my little fan again because it's a warm day, but it's not too hot, but it feels good just to have a little bit of breeze going. And I could have brought like a more serious fan because I actually do have uh, the inverter over there behind my water so I can power something pretty serious if I want to. And like I mentioned last time, this thing is actually very comfy in here. It's like a very calming color when the sun shines through in it. It makes a nice yellow. And since there's the clear opening on the front and also on the back, it doesn't feel claustrophobic or small or tight or anything like that in fact it feels pretty spacious it feels like a nice little room like a little home that's what it feels like it honestly just feels so good to just relax in here i think it's time to go on a little walk The name of the game is how many burrs will be on my socks at the end. You can see down there's the pond. And somewhere over here was my old shelter I made. I want to go check it out. It looks like the shelter, all of the leaves finally fell off, but it looks like the structure is still pretty solid to be honest. I'm still super proud of this thing, I really am. Hello? <laughs> anything in here? Nah, it doesn't look like anything's really been living in here, which is good. Because when I did spend the night in here, skunk came right up to it and I had no idea, which I thought was interesting. And look at all these crazy, look at all these spider webs here. There's just so many spider webs and I think you see right there, there's like a circular little spider hole. I think he's in there. Wow, there's probably like 10 spiders on me right now too. When it's like fall time, there's a whole bunch of snakes around here. I haven't seen any today, but it'd be cool if we saw one. Ooh, there's a bee. A bee came out of there. You do not want to go near that hole. <laughs> no, thank you. But let's go check out the little swamp. Last time we were over here, some deer ran out. Ugh. It is thicker than last time too. And again, we can see a whole bunch of little raccoon, <laughs> big old frog jump, little raccoon paws everywhere. All right, well, the mosquito factor out here is like a billion, so I think it's time to head on back. Catch you later, Mr. Frog. And it's also pretty muddy back here. Let's go find our little camper. And it's so thick. <laughs> It might take a minute. Hey, I can see it. It's a camper. <laughs> Look at this thing sticking out like a sore thumb. That's so cool. And we're back. The burr factor is pretty high after that little walk. We are sealed in our little camper. We got the door closed in the front. We got the door closed in the back. The best thing of all is no mosquitoes can get us because they're out there in the billions right now. It is crazy out there. I think it's time to just turn on our fan, relax a little bit, and we'll go ahead and cook some dinner soon. I really like how the sun shines through, especially when it's going through some leaves, so it's kind of like shifting shapes. I think it's pretty cool. I haven't really seen much movement outside today. It's a pretty calm day. Just a couple birds, didn't even see any squirrels, and probably a billion bugs. That's about it. And look at this, we have a mosquito trying to get in. Yeah, that's right. Turn around, buddy. Turn around. Alright, I'm hungry. Let's make some dinner. And today for dinner, I'm gonna have some couscous. 
And I also got myself some mackerel. There was originally going to be a pepper, but it looks like I forgot it. I do have an apple, but I don't think that that would go that well. It'd be nice if I could cook in here, but I'm not that comfortable cooking in little closed space with a stove like this. So I'm just going to go ahead, open up the back door, and we'll cook out there. Dumping in the flavor and then the couscous. Then you mix it up and you just wait. This is literally the most relaxed I've ever been when cooking and camping. I'm like laying down in my little camper. I got some couscous cooking over here. I'll be ready in a couple minutes. I'm in the middle of the forest and it's just a beautiful day. It doesn't get better than this. Ooh, look at that. I'm going to go ahead and take it inside our little camper just because it's so buggy outside and we're actually going to eat it in here. But the first thing is we're going to take some of this couscous Then we're going to open up our mackerel and I'm just going to dump it out. It's looking pretty tasty. There were supposed to be some peppers here but I kind of forgot them back in the fridge. But I also have this, some delicious hot sauce. I am hungry and excited and this is about to be so good. Take some of the fish and the couscous, a little touch of hot sauce. It's got a nice spice to it. I'm really happy with how the camper version 2.0 came out. It works. It works better than it did before. It's got more power. It can push through pretty much anything I wanted to other than like probably climb a mountain or something like that. It took about four more days to uh, upgrade everything. I had to take apart quite a bit of it. Uh, the hardest part of this build was uh, the differentials. They were not putting out power when I wanted them to and I had no idea why so I had to take them all apart and weld them. And that was uh, just a tedious process that I wasn't sure uh, really was going to work but it worked fine. They're super solid now and uh, they put out a lot of power these things. I really like how it has tank steering now. I really like the control over it. It's a fun controller. It feels like a video game or something like that with the throttles and the buttons. I think it's way cooler than a normal steering wheel. The battery, the big old battery, the EnjoyBot battery is, is fantastic. I drove it for quite a while and I thought I would have probably taken up like 20% of it, but it only took up like 5% or 4%. I don't remember, which is just absolutely wild. But a battery like this is so big that you can actually use it to make like a solar system or energy systems. And that's something I definitely want to dabble with and make a video of in the future. I think it'd just be really cool to make a little off-grid solar system and it's crazy to think that this is eight times more powerful than the last builds and I haven't even used it at full throttle. I'm kind of scared to use it at full throttle just because it has so much power. Even if I squeeze it about like a quarter of the way, it just shoots forward and I fall back a little bit. If I had it full blast and just went for it, I'd probably be flying out the back of the camper and I'm not trying to do that. Couscous is good. Same with mackerel. About to have myself some more couscous. It was amazing to see the response of the last video of the camper build. So many people watched it and seen it and, and commented on it and had so many suggestions and ideas. And uh, I just want to say thanks for watching the video and thanks for helping me get to 100,000 subscribers. It's like a big milestone for me. I've been working on this channel for a long time and I'm just thankful for everyone who ever watched my videos. I'm never sure what I'm going to do next, but I hope you'll join me on that journey. And I just want to say thanks again and cheers. Mm -hmm. Dinner was great, nice and spicy, just like I like it. I'm definitely sweating a bit, and it's hard to tell if it's because of the hot sauce or just because it's hot outside. And if you can tell, it is a little bit wet in here. I think it's just from the condensation of me breathing. The first time I slept in here, there was no condensation at all. I just got to thinking, the moisture is actually probably from me pulling in the couscous after cooking it when it was still like really hot and boiling a bit. Or it could be my breath. Or it could be this mosquito. I almost forgot, I brought this again, my small little security camera that I'm gonna take outside, tape it to a tree, and hopefully this time the bugs will leave it alone so we'll actually be able to catch something cool on camera. So let's go set this thing up. I'm thinking, I'm thinking over here. I'm 
it's so peaceful out right now. You just hear birds. Really no breeze. It's not hot. It's not cold. It's just perfect. It's just a little bit buggy. That's about it. And honestly, it's a beautiful night. It really is. I'm definitely excited to spend the night in the camper again. I'm still hoping to see some deer or something. That'd be pretty cool too. How cool is this thing? Huge battery, got the inverter, massive flashlight. That's just my camera gear, which I do love anyway. Whole bunch of power underneath this thing. Eight times as much power as the last build. All inside this nice, beautiful yellow tarp enclosure that's made out of a greenhouse. I really like how this controller turned out. It's a little bit dirty though, but hey, it's awesome. I really like how there's the throttles, repurposed a foot pedal to turn into like a, a hand trigger. So it's giant like shoulder buttons. You got our forward and reverse switches. You got our brakes and our light switch. So cool. The sun's starting to set just a little bit in the background over there. You can kind of see it poking through the trees. starting to get dark outside and every once in a while I see a flash of light I see some glow bugs starting to poke out let's go ahead and test out our lights even though they're the same they just have a new switch they really just light up the area so cool still waiting for a deer to come up and check us out Ooh, those are bright. Lights on. Put it in reverse. <laughs> Send it forward. <laughs> ah, this thing's awesome. It's definitely dark out right now. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the big old flashlight turn the power on oh this thing is a beast every time i turn it on i forget how bright it is let's just go look around a little bit Quiet. I can hear crickets. I see a bunch of bugs flying. It's just so calm. Feels like there's nothing here. Well, I think it's time to head on back, turn the camper to night mode, and get ourselves some good sleep. It's been a wonderful day, it really has been. The camper is over here. It's like a beacon in the forest. It's time to convert this thing into night mode. There's a perfect little space right outside the zipper where I can store my boots. And we're in for the night. I really like it when I turn this thing into night mode. It's just very comfy in here. I like how the lights reflect off of the yellow tarp. It's like I don't even need to bring a lantern. I guess I'm just stuck in the, the habit of bringing a lantern even though I could probably run those lights off of the battery for like probably days. It's drawing about one amp and that means we have about 93 hours we can run these lights <laughs> and that is a beast of a battery. There's all these bugs that are right outside the little plastic layer trying to get in and there's some interesting green grasshoppers that are here as well. Everything's definitely attracted to the lights and they probably just like the color yellow too. I'm curious if these grasshopper guys will be here in the morning. Yeah, 
I brought the steam deck again. It's the end of the night. It's around 11 o'clock or so. I am tired. It's been a long week to get this thing upgraded, but I'm really happy with how it came along. It's been a wonderful day, had a wonderful meal, explored the forest a little bit. It was nice to go visit the old shelter I made. It's still hanging on there even though all the leaves fell off. It's interesting, I honestly forget I'm in the middle of the forest when I'm in the camper with it in night mode because it's just so covered. It feels like I'm in a little room or something. I've never been in a capsule hotel and I've always wanted to. And I assume this is kind of what it feels like. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to catch some sleep in a minute. And I'm excited because in the morning for breakfast, I have a little special treat that we're going to have. Which will be a lot of fun. Get some good sleep and I'll catch you then. I slept pretty good. I fell asleep pretty quickly. There's not really condensation on uh, the walls or anything like that. There's like so many bugs just caught between the layers all just staring at me sleeping. I think it's time to get up, head outside, and make ourselves some delicious breakfast. It is time for breakfast. What do you get when you bring a massive 48 volt battery, an inverter, and a waffle iron? Yeah, that's right. We're making waffles. <laughs> Plug in our waffle maker. Oh, that might be too much. And there's a hair in there. I think we are ready for our first waffle. <laughs> Look at that. That's a waffle. That's crazy. Very cool. I'm literally just making waffles in the middle of the forest. I mean, honestly, it doesn't get better than this. We got 92%, we're drawing about 8 amps, about 423 watts, and we could run this waffle maker for about 12 hours if we wanted to. <laughs> That'd be a lot of waffles. And they'd be looking mighty tasty. Got ourselves a delicious stack of waffles. Something I never thought I would do when camping, but hey, you never know. Look at this thing, this beautiful stack. It's gonna be delicious. I can't believe I made waffles in the middle of the forest. This is gonna be a great breakfast, I'm excited. A little bit of honey action. Cheers. So good, these are very good. This camper thing is so much fun. I think the inverter was such a great little addition on, especially since I have such a big battery. And thanks again, Enjoybot, for sending it. Definitely go check out their stuff. As for the future of the camper version 2.0, I'm not sure what's next. I'm not sure what I want to do next. I'm not sure if, if I want to do anything next. I mean, there's always possibilities to change it really in any way I want. I'd be curious to hear your suggestions of what you think I should do with it. Or I might just keep it as is for a while and take it on some camping trips. I definitely want to take this thing out in snow, but that's quite a while away. I think that would be a lot of fun to take this thing out in snow. Be curious if it uh, holds up, and I could even bring like a mini like 100 watt heater or something like that and probably run that for like 20 hours. <laughs> and I feel like this is the hardest time to drive this thing. There's just vines and so much coverage everywhere. In the fall, there'll be less. In the winter, it'll be interesting with the snow. We just got to see. Got all these mosquitoes everywhere. 
and I like the steering system of the version 2.0 better than the old steering wheel. I mean, the steering wheel is fine. It's just, uh, it's not as exciting and cool as the new controller. The new controller feels like, uh, like a drone controller or something like that. It's got all these switches and knobs and I don't know. I like that stuff. Nothing like having some freshly baked waffles in the middle of the forest. Definitely a first for me and I doubt it will be the last. These are actually really good. I feel like whenever you eat food out in nature, whatever you're eating just tastes so much better. The last bite. Let's see if we caught anything cool that night. The security cameras didn't catch much in the night, mostly just a whole bunch of bugs flying around poking at the camera lens. There was also this interesting little ball floating by, I'm pretty sure it was just a bug, but I thought it was pretty cool. Other than that, it was just a calm night in the forest. I'm gonna let the waffle iron cool down a bit, then we're gonna pack this thing up, take one more little view around, and we're gonna head on back. It really is a beautiful day out right now, I think it's actually nicer than it was yesterday. And you can hear some cicadas screeching in the background. And with the camper, cleaning up is super easy. I'm just literally gonna just put a rope between my camera and the flashlight to tie it down, and that's it. Just pull it nice and tight, and we're ready. Camp is clean. It's been a lot of fun. But time to head on out of here. And in order to do that, we got to get this thing to spin around. Uh, let's spin it this way. And gently. I just want to say thanks for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something or you just had a great time. Anyways, I'll catch you all in the next one. And keep on keeping on.